Hey guys, this is Tyler Britt, your Instructional Technology Coordinator, with another edition of Snack Pack Rapid Fire PD. Today, I'm going to show you two extra tricks on Google Docs. These are things that maybe you're familiar with in Microsoft Word if you used it very frequently, particularly when kids are doing research or reporting, but maybe you haven't quite mastered how to do it in Google Docs. So I'm going to show you two different things today. Um, one is inserting page numbers, and the other is, is a, a quick and easy way to make a table of contents in a large document, such as a student's research paper. For the sake of our example today, I've just gone to wikipedia.com and copied and pasted some of the article about the Kansas City Zoo. So full disclosure, I didn't write this material. All I've done is I've gone to the table of contents there and pulled out um, information about the different areas just to use as our model. Okay? I'm going to first show you just really quickly how to insert page numbers in a Google document. It's pretty simple. Lots of teachers like to have page numbers on students' documents. All I'm going to do is go to insert, go down to page number, and then I have some different choices here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and go with the first choice, which is just inserting a page number um, at the top right of each page. And then I can click out of that. So you'll see I've got page one. I can scroll down to three, so on and so forth. Just pretty simple. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build a table of contents. Now, building a table of contents in Google Docs works very similarly to building a, a, an automatic table of contents in Microsoft Word. For example, um, I can have headers, subheaders, and then continuing on down from there, it will build a table of contents that I can insert right here that will actually be linked so I can click to jump to different parts. So let me just jump right in. Here I've got the Kansas City Zoo, and I told you that my particular write-up was all about the different areas or exhibits of the zoo. So I'm just going to highlight this word exhibits. That's sort of my main header. I'm going to come up here to where it says styles. And instead of normal text, I'm going to change that to heading one. That is my top heading. You're going to see it's going to change the style of font just a little bit. So that's the main um, paragraph that's going to tell me about how the zoo is divided. Then I get into the specific little areas. For example, front entry plaza. That is a subheading of exhibits because the front entry to the zoo is a specific part in the zoo with specific exhibits. I'm going to select that header and then I'm going to go back to styles and instead of heading one, I'm going to make this heading two. A subpart of the front entry plaza, one of the main attractions there, of course, are Berlin and Nikita, our polar bears. So I'm going to select that text. And just as you might suspect, it's not a main heading or a subheading. It's underneath the subheading of Front Entry Plaza. I'm going to select that. You're going to notice that makes it gray. It's a little bit smaller. You'll notice all three of these are different. I'm going to just go ahead and go up to the top area. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Insert, scroll to the bottom, and click Table of Contents. You'll see my table of contents start to generate. I've got the Kansas City Zoo at the very top, and then I have exhibits. Under that is Front Entry Plaza, and then Polar Bear Plunge. I'm going to keep building, and we'll come back and check on this in a moment. Now, Africa is a different area of the zoo. It's not lumped in with Polar Bear Plunge. It needs to be at the same level as the front, front entry, because it's another large area with smaller areas inside of it. I'm going to select it. I'm going to come over to uh, where it says normal text and put heading two. <clears throat> Botswana is a place in Africa, heading three. Kenya is in Africa, heading three. Tanzania, hopefully you're starting to see how all of this is organized. Uganda, and finally the Congolese rainforest, the last area in Africa. Now I'm going to go back up top, and I like to check my work as I go. So I'm going to click into here, and I'll see a little refresh. I'm going to go ahead and refresh or update the table of contents. And you'll see now I've got at the same level as the front entry plaza, Africa, and all the sub areas. If I go back down to my article, Australia is another large area. It shouldn't be under Africa. It should be equal to Africa. I'm going to do heading two. Tiger Trail is a heading two. Kids Zone 
is a heading to, but it has a small part inside of it, which is the discovery barn. It's a specific place inside of the kid zone. So I'll do heading three for that. Okay, I'm going to go back up, click in and refresh. And you'll see that I've got all my main areas here underneath exhibits with all the pieces of that inside. Obviously, you're going to adapt this to whatever it is your kids are writing about. Perhaps they're writing about specific people and then subfacts under that, or specific events and subfacts under that. Many, many ways you could use this, including building your own course syllabus, preparing meeting notes, agendas, things like that. But that is exactly how you build um, table of contents in Google Docs. I hope this quick little video illustrating how to do table of contents and bullet and uh, number pages in Google Docs has been helpful to you. And until next time, onward we go.